1200cc pre B series engine under the bonnet and GP GT. A slice of BMC's finest coming in now. The Leyland Princess. Jaguar was the featured mark. Uh, Renault 4 CV, we saw this one at Woodford. A BSA Bantam being trailered in. Could see some proper old cars here getting in the limelight. What is this magnificent station wagon here? Yeah, where was this sun when we were walking around before lunch? Good grief. So, the opportunity to kick it out for car of the show. Well, welcome to Old Classic Car and we are back at Cape Thorn Hall here in sunny, or rather not so sunny Cheshire for the Classic Car Show. It is August, towards the end of August 2023, day two of a two-day yesterday. Jaguar was the featured mark in front of the old house over there, but today it is the turn of Mercedes-Benz. What Mercedes-Benz will turn up? What other classic cars will turn up on this slightly overcast day? The weather yesterday was pretty miserable, so uh, will we get a good turnout today? Let's go and have a look and see some of the arrivals. Classic Mini with Rally Chopper on roof. And that's swiftly followed by a Metro, a Metro City. Well, look at this, an Austin A40 Somerset. The replacement to the Austin Devon and the Dorset two door before that. All the Somersets were four doors, they didn't make a van, didn't make a pickup, didn't make a countryman. It's just the saloon, the four door saloon like you see here with a 1200cc pre B series engine under the bonnet. Makes light work of the speed bump of doom. Great looking four door Cortina Mark II. One ninety E Mercedes, like I say, Mercedes Benz is the featured mark here today at Cape Thorn Hall. I'm sure we're going to see many three pointed stars before the day is through. The 107 Series Mercedes SL, the R107, lovely car, 280 SL. A Lincoln Continental on the T plates about 1977 or 8. That should have no problem with the uh, speed hump of doom. Surprisingly dark under this umbrella of trees. We've got a Ford Escort five door here, the Mark IV Escort, I think that is, and the Mercedes alongside that. And the mighty Ford Thunderbird, got a 126 series SEC on a G plate, the coupe version of the 126 saloon. So what's that, a 420 SEC, hope you can just about see that, it's jolly dark under here. The burble of the T-Bird next to me, magnificent machine. And the bath over there, and a couple of Mercs. Lots of fishing going on today as well here at Cape Thorn Hall. It all goes on here, but back to the motor cars. Got an Escort and RS2000 on a later front wheel drive. RS2000s, I believe, yeah. An E33 series BMW, very nice indeed. 320i Mark II Capri on a motorcycle. Next up, classic Mercedes again, an R129 SL. Very swish, rolling in serenely. Next up, 
124 series Mercedes-Benz convertible with the roof raised yeah that's the 124 series and the Porsche 944 very smart indeed is that an XR3i Cabriolet I think it is that's based on the Mark 4 Ford Escort and an early Volvo P1800S it's one of the cowhorn bumper cars bodied by Jensen before Volvo took on the production themselves that's quite an early one Little Matra Murina. Those are an interesting little car. Three abreast seating. A bit like the McLaren F1, although in the McLaren F1 you sit in the middle, the driver sits in the middle. But on those, the driver sits on the left hand side. It's a left hand drive car. I'm not sure if they ever did a right hand drive car for this market. Yeah, a very rare, oddball little French car. MGB GT. I've seen quite a few modernish cars today, but it's good to see another classic car. There is a 126 series, a W126S class Mercedes Benz. These came out in the sort of mid 1980s, as I remember. Dad used to have a 500 SEL, beautifully made car. Wasn't so keen on corners, but in a straight line, it drove very nicely indeed. This one looks like a bit of fun. A bubble arched Mark 1 Ford Escort, done up as a rally car. Got the matte black bonnet. Lovely XK behind it as well. Very, very swish indeed. Just shows the variety of cars you get at these classic car events. Mighty Stingray. Smells warm. Aston Martin next. Wonder if we'll get any pre war cars in today. I think the oldest car I've seen so far was that Austin A40 Somerset. Is that the oldest one so far? Hopefully we'll see something pre-war here before the day is through. I think a lot of people will be watching the weather forecast very closely before setting off this morning. So, uh, yeah, let's just see what turns up. The Rover here from the 1990s. I think this is this, this the R8 series Rovers, I think they call them. Correct me in the comments if I got that one wrong, but I think that's what it is. of Blackpool Thunder coming in now TVR the mighty fiberglass bodied TVR this is a Cerbera with a fixed roof longer wheelbase compared to your Chimeras and your Griffiths very burbly indeed got a classic Ford coming in now burbling in Mark 1 Ford Capri on a K plate so about 1971 ish Beautiful example in metallic blue. Got another Dallas era Mercedes SL here, the 107. Now quite a few modern cars turning up today, including Mercedes, but we will be prioritising the older cars, as always, here on the old classic car channel, because it's a classic car channel. So uh, apologies if I don't feature your car if it's a little bit later than the, the time frame that I usually feature, but yeah. The 2CV, that's more like it. Fantastic. Air cooled 602 cc or 652 more likely and the mighty Dodge Charger the Dodge Challenger memories of Kowalski in the film Vanishing Point with that one two MX-5s Mark 1 and a Mark 3 I think Hotly pursued by a classic Mustang. What a beautiful looking car that is. These are available with a straight six or the V8 engine. That one's V8. 
Here we have a Nissan Figaro based on the Micra. GB GT V8, three and a half litre rover engine in that one. Very swish. Got a VW Golf Cabriolet here, converted by Carmen based on the Mark 1 VW Golf. Followed by a slightly later Mustang compared to the ones we saw before. This one on the J plates, about 1971, I think. Fantastic Mark II Ford console. Another 1950s car, magnificent. What a beauty that is. MGB GT and another 124 series Mercedes. Is this the E500? Yes, it is. That's a bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing. Slightly wider flared arches on those, differentiate those from the regular 124 series Mercedes. I think it's a 5 litre V8 engine. At one point they were called E500s, and at another point in time they were called a 500E. I'm not quite sure which one came first, but there was a slight difference. But the same car, a bit of a hot rod. Yeah, 5 litre V8 engine hide away in that fairly modest looking body shell. You really wouldn't know if you just saw that driving past on the road, unless you spotted the flared wheel arches. And what's this coming in behind me here? This is an ice cream van. <laughs> and a Mercedes. Got a classic Mercedes dating back to the 1970s, these did. 123 series. MG Maestro next. Toyota Sarah or Sierra with the gold wing lift up doors. Great little bay window VW camp here on a K plate. A slice of BMC's finest coming in now, 1965 Austin A60 Cambridge. What a Bobby Dazzler that is. Fiat 600. Morning. How are we? Good old Leyland Princess next. Is that is that Russet Brown, I think?
P38 Range Rover shouldn't have any problems with a slightly boggy ground today. An MGZT, or rather. Followed by a, quite a late 75 Rover on which the MG is based. Talking of MGs, we have an MGA Roadster. Very smart little car. We have a Triumph TR6, the Burberry straight six, two and a half litre fuel injected engine there. Sierra Sapphire Cosworth, the booted Sierra Cosworth, four-wheel drive. Morris Minor, wouldn't be a classic car show without a Morris Minor. And this one is a police Morris Minor. Wonder if it's got a zip in the headlining. That's usually the sign internally of an ex-police Morris Minor. They used to have a zip in the headlining so they could reach the lamp on the roof. Modifications are plenty with what started out life as a Bedford CF. It's a good turnout of classic minis here today. Ooh, more BL, the Vandenplas 1500. What a Bobby does of that is a real mint to this particular example. We've seen this one. At the Combermere, the Piggery Cafe and various other places. Crew Heritage, I think we've seen it too. Obviously based on the Austin Allegro, but no mention of Allegro in any of the sales brochures, I think. Ooh, another Leyland Princess. This one on an S registration. The previous one was a little bit newer on a V, I think. Yes, it was good to see them out and about. First Mark II Jaguar sighting of the day. Perhaps it'll be the only Mark II Jaguar sighting of the day. Yesterday, as I said before, was Jaguar was the featured Mark. Very smart indeed, I do like that. Ford Granada. TVR Chimera, Rover V8 powered. Renault 4 CV, we saw this one at Woodford. It's good to sit out and about again. It's a familiar sound. We're just heading in the direction of Cape Storm Hall itself. Got another 124 series, a W124 Mercedes saloon. 
joining its brothers in front of Capesthorne Hall itself. What a magnificent setting for a classic car show. Jaguars are plenty. Yeah, Jaguars are plenty here yesterday. Although we weren't here. And uh, Mercedes Benz today. So let's go and have a look, see what classic Mercedes have turned up today. So there's that E500 we saw driving in before. Five litre V8 engine hiding away under that bonnet there. Real cue car, if you remember what they were. Cue cars were sort of very understated cars that packed a real punch. And that's the case of the E500. These are fantastic cars, all left hand drive. I've got a feeling Porsche were involved with these in some way. I can't quite remember what. But if you look at the front arches, and indeed the rear arches, they are slightly more flared compared to the regular 124 series saloons and estates, coupes and so on. But the E500, yeah, it's a bit of a hot rod. Right, let's carry on. Got the stacked headlamp Mercedes, the drop head. I'm never quite sure which model we're looking at here. I know some of the saloons were the W108, introduced in the late 1960s and produced until about 72 or 73, something like that. This is a magnificent drop head version there. What a fantastic car that is. Now that'll either have a straight six or the three and a half litre V8. There was also the 6.3, but I don't know if they did the soft top version with the 6.3 of that. That's a stunning car. I mean, there's a lot of modern Mercs here. But we will obviously prioritise the proper old ones. Must be fit to classic car show. This is a 220 SE. A beautiful chrome. Stunning, stunning quality car. Mercs really were pretty much unparalleled in terms of build quality at this particular time. Lovely, lovely quality. It's seriously expensive to fix up a rough one of these. You can still get many, many parts still from Mercedes themselves, but you'll certainly, your wallet will certainly know about it if you buy anything in quantity. What a beautiful quality car that is. Next to that, somewhat older car. This is what they call the Pontons. The Ponton series cars of the 1950s. And again, beautiful quality cars, petrol or diesel power. But yeah, what a cracker that is. Then we've got a Pagoda Roof SL alongside that. Well, this one has the soft top, so it doesn't have the hard top, which is the thing that has the Pagoda shape to it. But all the cars are called Pagoda Mercs. These SLs, again, stunning car from a time when Mercedes really stood for top-notch quality. And here's that W123 Saloon. Really sharp looking car. I think this was a diesel power car. Many of them are petrol. Usually six on the petrol. Mostly fuel injected. Although some were carburetted. Yeah, 300D, D for diesel. Beloved by taxi drivers the world over, and rightly so, they know what they're doing. They don't want cars that break down. These things were built like tanks. Absolutely incredible quality car. Last, probably the last of the really well screwed together Mercedes. These were introduced in the 1970s and produced into the 1980s. Yeah. Really lovely little line of a Mercedes there. Proper, proper old Mercedes cars. Well, let's have a quick scoot around some of the other Mercs. There's that 190E, the SL, the R129, and the R107 alongside that. Another 129 over there. Let's keep going. Another very smart 1992 190E Mercedes. These were very well screwed together as, as well. Let's keep going. Hunting classic Mercs here at Cape Thorn Hall. There's my youthful assistant. Another R107, lovely car. Are there any of the SLCs here today, I wonder? There's another 124. Here's that S-Class, the W126. Straight sixes, all V8s were available. This has got the V8. Happy memories of the gold-coloured 500 SEL that Dad used to run a few years ago. He went through a series of 7-series uh, BMWs. 
but in the middle there was a W126 Mercedes just like this a long wheelbase 5 litre V8 car it was really really well screwed together car really comfy didn't have the ride of a Jaguar but the build quality was on another level compared to the Jag <laughs> yeah. Let's carry on our hunt, and here we have the coupe version. This car is for sale. Oh dear, temptation. So we've got the saloon there, the S Class saloon, and the S Class coupe, the SEC. So, what engine was this one? Is this a 500, 420? Could even be a 560. Let's have a look. He usually tells you on the boot. They are 420 SEC. Engineered like no other car in the world. It, it's hard to argue. Mm -hmm. I prefer this one. Yeah, oh, that's, a, that's a good looking thing, isn't it? 1980s. Yes. <laughs> I remember on the 124 estates we used to have the, the mirrors were different shapes on either side. One was squarer than the other. Yeah, real. Quality lump of metal there. The only thing I never liked about these particularly was how clunky the door handle is. I think the door handle just spoils, I think it just spoils the line of it because it's such a great looking car. Very sleek, the two door coupes, much longer doors compared to those on the front of the saloon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, the a big sort of lump considering you've got all the sort of heating and, yes. and so they sort of vibrate or something don't they? If I, if I was Quentin Wilson on Top Gear 30 years ago I'd be saying this is these cars are hewn from granite that's the kind of line that you used to hear when these were current cars back in the day in the olden days the 1980s and the 90s another SL there lovely black example 190 there quite like those there's one over in the corner there, which I want to have a look at. We'll just get past all these. That's a nice SL. Let's get past these. Not really our cup of tea. But look at this Ponton. The drop head version of the Ponton. Another 220, I think this is. No, that's a proper Mercedes. That's a fantastic car. I remember this one. It looks like a sort of 220S. But it's just yeah. mellowed. Yeah, left hand drive, 1960, there's an information sheet in the window, so we will have a look at that. Let's look at the seats now, yeah. it's yeah, so nicely it's mag warm. It's magnificent in there, isn't it? Super duper car. But it's not over, is No, that's lovely. Ooh, windows open, we can have a peer inside. That's what we like, look at that. Proper glamorous. I could just see myself driving around Saint Tropez in something like this. Is that the handbrake? Audrey Hepburn in the passenger seat, perhaps. Yeah, that's the handbrake, I think, isn't it's it, down there? That's a place to put it. It'll take your knee out, wouldn't it? I want to have a crash. Well, it wouldn't normally be sticking out, but. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a cracker this is. 1960 220S Ponton Cabriolet, 2200cc. Built from 1956 to 1960. So there's a bit of the blurb. Just pause the video if you want to have a read up on this particular car. What a fantastic machine this is. This car came to the UK via Portugal, France and Germany. In recent years have been on many European tours, including several visits to Bopard. Addition of EZ, or EZ, electric power steering system has transformed the low speed handling of the car. What a cracker that is. Indeed, yes. That's a nice badge. Lovely lamps as well. Are they Bosch? Yeah, they're Bosch. They will be Bosch. Yeah, yeah. nice ones. And I like these indicators on the top as well. Yes. They'd look nice for us. <laughs> Isn't it cool to see the indicators when you're driving? Yeah. Isn't that so cool? Yeah. Let's have another look at that Ponton. And this magnificent 220 SE Cabriolet. Wow. What a beautifully stylish looking car that is. Understated, understated <laughs> quality and elegance. Something that seems to be devoid on most modern cars that you see today, sadly. 
Surely it isn't beyond the wit of man to actually design elegant, understated, classy looking cars anymore like this fantastic 220. What a cracker that is. Mm. There's the information, 1955 220A Ponton. This sounds actually an auto. Mm. It's a beautiful car, beautiful paint finish on it as well. It's quite agreeable. Very agreeable. So is that a six cylinder? Or is it probably, four? probably. Course they did these in diesels, didn't they? Yeah, petrol or diesel, these were available. Is it just 220s or 280? I don't know, I don't I don't know the model numbers that well. Because this one's a 220 and that one's also 220. Is it? Yeah, there. That's 280. Mm. <laughs> Whatever. There's the Cheshire Classic Car Club here as always. E Type, Lotus Cortina Mark 1. We've seen one or two of these before. And uh, I'll be back on air at quarter two to announce the running order as well. Rubber bumper MGB there with bib on front just to protect the paintwork. Capri Triumph 2000, Lotus XL, Honda S2000, very appropriate registration number. Really high revving cars they were. Pontiac Firebird, we followed this one part of our journey in this morning. The Triumph Spitfire 1500, our registration, fairly early 1500. The Austin Healy 3000, very, very smart indeed. XK Jaguar, the Ford Mustang, and on the end here, a little clan. Various motorcycles, Suzuki. What do we have over here? The Bull Taco Racer. Let's amble along the road. Honda Super Sport on the end here. Behind that, MOT 129, the Austin A40 Somerset we saw driving in before. This is a fairly rare variant because it has the steel factory sliding sunroof, no less. That was an optional extra. You don't see too many with the sliding roof now. A bit of sort of semi-open top motor in there for the 1950s motorist. Good to see it on its original registration and plates, the old Blue Mail's number plate. Which we approve a great deal. I used to have a beigey sort of colour. Austin Somerset many years ago. It wasn't always plain sailing, I must admit. I had one wheel come off it. Which was quite exciting as I was driving along. Yeah, this one looks to be in pretty good condition. Real survivor. So what year would this be? About 1953, 1954 perhaps, somewhere around there. About to get run over by a Triumph motorcycle. Burbly, burbly. Back to the Austin Somerset. Yeah, the single carburetor. Of course the chassis and the running gear on these particular cars lent themselves to being developed into what became the A40 Sports. The aluminium bodied, the Jensen bodied A40 Sports which shared the running gear with the A40 Somerset, albeit it had twin carburetors, whereas these just have a single carb on them. They always had a bit of a reputation for being fairly underdamped, so they could be a little bit wallowy in corners or if you braked sharply you would get a lot of the, the dipping business, but you just drive accordingly and it's the same today. I sometimes wonder when you see people buy old cars and the first thing they say is how can I make it stop like a modern car or drive like a modern car and I don't, I kind of defeats the object of buying an old car I think if I'm honest. If you're buying an old car from 70 years ago you have to adopt the mindset of the driver and the motorist of 70 years ago. Recalibrate your thinking in terms of stopping distances and acceleration, handling, cornering and all that. I and mean, this is still on the original cross-ply tyres. 
the balance of it. Yeah. This is exactly what it was designed for, of course. You could put radials on it, perhaps. But more often than not, it loads the steering up, so you get really heavy steering. So typically, these old cars tend to drive better on the original cross plies. At least that's my experience, anyway, of these sort of cars. If you want something to sort of be driving on the door handles and tearing around the countryside, you don't buy a car like this. This is a potterer. This is for ambling to the shops, ambling to the pub, and pottering along to classic car events like today here at Cape Thorn Hall. Here's our little Matra Murina, 2.2 litre, rear breast seating, real oddball. Yeah, well, the Talbot Matra Marina, 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 1983, built 1981 to 1984, 118 brake horsepower mid engined. Gas, glass fibre body panels on galvanised steel structure. Mm, so fiberglass body and a galvanised chassis. So that should run forever. I remember there used to be a white one of these parked not far from where we used to live in the early 1980s. So a white one at Autos de France? Mmm. Oh, well, that's quite sprightly, isn't it? Nine seconds to 60. Yeah, it's not going to be very heavy, is it? Right, and here is this beautiful little Renault 4CV. We saw this one, like I say, we saw this one at Woodford a few months ago. Always great to see these out and about. You don't see them too often. But this one's a little bobby dazzler. A little bit earlier than ours with more horizontal strakes on the front there. Those little bits of beading. That's usually a sign it's a slightly earlier car. And this one, like the Somerset, has a steel sliding sunroof, no less. Luxury of luxuries. Oh, the bonnet's going up. We're going to see the prized possession of this particular owner. Oh, there it is. Anyone who watched the Woodford video may remember getting very, very excited about this factory-fitted uh, spare fuel can fits inside the front wheel it's only because the spare wheel on mine sort of slopes in fits in and it drops down a bit more there's a slightly different arrangement on this one but look at this magnificent purpose built for the 4cv what a cracking thing that is heavens above of course it's rear engine just like ours is water cooled rear engine car 747 748, 748 cc, of course. I'll pop the uh, pop the lid, sir, please. There we go. Oh, I'm familiar with that engine. I've spent quite a while fiddling with ours. Similar but different. I love the uh, the air filter there with that little uh, transfer on it still. Yeah, very familiar scenes. It's mm -hmm. going well, is it? Still behaving. Yeah, still behaving itself. It is. That's all very good. So what year is this? What year is it? 51. 51, yeah. So it's three years older than ours. Yeah, it's 50, 51. Yeah, right. And it's been in the mill mill year. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a great little car, isn't it? You don't see many of them, do you? Have you seen any others at all? Only that red one that was in yeah. the at the Autos de France, wasn't it? Yeah, there was one at Alton Park, wasn't there? And that had a Renault 5 engine in it, I think. They did race them at Le Mans, though, didn't they? Well, the Alpine, that's how he started with the Renault Alpine. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yes. <laughs> no, great little cars. So this is left-hand drive, this is a French-built car. Whereas ours was assembled here, hence being right-hand drive. So there's many detailed differences, but the fundamentals are pretty much the same. Got some lovely Sibi lamps on the front. Yeah, little Sibi Oscars. Put very popular with the Rally Boys, the Sibi Oscars and the Super Oscars, the larger versions. You often see Mark II Escorts festooned with many, many extra lamps. Yeah, what a treat to see this little 4CV again. Well, we've got the roof open now, demonstrating the open air motoring available to the owner of this particular 4CV. Little drain holes in the corner, have to make sure you keep those clear. Yeah. 
Right, we've got Citroen BX there, nice early Morgan just drove in. Nice one on the proper old steel wheels. Little Brooklyn screens as well, the Brooklyn's aero screens. No windscreens on these Morgans. These were built for hardy types. Goggles and reversed flat caps of the order of the day with Morgans of this era. And look at this. A very distinctively coloured Jowett Javelin. I've not seen this one before. It's demonstrating the fact that to get at that little engine, the little boxer engine in the front there, you can take off the top section of the, the radiator assembly, hence it being down there. And this bottom bit, I think this hinges down if I remember correctly. So you've got the radiator there behind the engine. Engine tucked away right down there. Really idiosyncratic car, these little Jowitts all the way from Idle in Bradford, Yorkshire. BEJ571, proper registration as well. Let's have a quick peer inside, the owner's just said I can have a quick peek inside. It's lovely. Come too far back. Oh, there's no check strap. Oh, got you. Got. So these were adjustable armrests, weren't they? I think they adjusted up and down, didn't they? Well, look at these ones. the model that's got the picnic shelf? The sort of the rear shelf doubles up. Oh, is it not the deluxe? Oh, right. Oh, right. Oh, they come out, do they? Oh. Oh, so they so you pop them out of the way. The little armrests. Right, wow. Yeah, very advanced little cars for the day. Super aerodynamic. And they've quite a clever sort of cantilevered boot lid arrangement, if I remember on these, so you can actually get underneath properly. Yeah, really neat little cars. <coughs> De rigueur driving shoes. Yeah. Very well equipped dashboard there, many, many gauges. Monitor all your systems. Of course, these shared their basic running gear with the sporty Jowett Jupiter as well. And over here, we have a standard Vanguard, a Phase 1A standard Vanguard. The Phase 1s have lots of narrow slats on the grille. Phase 1A had the slightly chunkier grille, a bit like that on the E-Series Vauxhalls. If you saw the Morton Hampstead video recently, you'll see what I mean. There was an E-Series Vauxhall in there and they have quite a chunky grille on them, a chrome grille. And that's very similar looking, especially from the front. Very similar looking to the E-Series Cresters and the Wyverns and so on. This has a big four-cylinder petrol engine about 2.2 litres I think the same basic engine was featured in the TR2 and TR3 and indeed the petrol engine Fergie tractor the grey Fergie also had a derivative of this particular engine this is a beautiful example fantastic paint and chrome what a cracking looking car that is and again very similar shape actually to the Javelin alongside the Javelin is even more sleek but you can see what they were thinking, the designers at Standard and also Jowett. Streamlining was all the rage in the post-war years. And then the Phase 2 Vanguard came along and that had a proper boot that sort of came round. The front was very similar to the 1A, but we lost the Beetleback styling of these earlier cars. And these are so distinctive. Great looking, great looking cars. I'm assuming this is the one we saw at Wem recently. If you've not seen that video yet please check that one out because it shows footage of i'm assuming it's this car or one identical to it driving through the town itself as part of the parade at when vehicles of interest that was a good fun video to do and over here we've got a vitesse a vitesse convertible on the j plate so this is a mark ii the two liter straight six engine 
and period wolf race alloy wheels. Of course it's based on the Triumph Herald, although there were numerous differences apart from the different engine. For example, the Vitesses have these anodized sort of aluminium covers, sort of the bumper I suppose you'd call it. Whereas on Heralds I think they were like a white plasticky type rubber affair. But the Vitesses had these anodized pieces and also a panel set in to the rear of the boot lid there. The Mark II, this will have the Rotorflex rear suspension, which was a more advanced version of the independent suspension fitted to Heralds and Spitfires and the earlier Vitesses and GC6s. Did handle a lot better under extreme conditions compared to the earlier cars. The rear wheels were very prone to tucking under on the earlier Vitesses and the Heralds and so on. But the Vitesses and the Mark II GT6 had the Rotorflex back end and it did calm things down a little bit and it was a real, real improvement. Here we've got a TR6 and a Bentley, a T-Series Bentley, of course, based on the Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow. This would be a Bentley T1 on the G-plate, so late 1960s. Which one to have, the Rolls-Royce or the Bentley? I think I would go for the Bentley every time. I think the T1s are just a little bit, only a little bit more understated. I prefer the shape of the radiators on these. A lot curvier compared to the Shadow. And of course you've got the beautiful Bentley badge as well. It's the same 6.75 litre V8 Rolls-Royce engine under the bonnet of course. And built at crew as all the Shadows were I think with the possible exception of the Mulliner two-door cars. No rear bumper on this one, good heavens. So I'm appearing through the window. Very agreeable indeed. Really nice, got the original static belts in there. It's a lovely smell of leather. Chrome catches as well. Assuming those are original fitment. The BSA Bantam being trailered in. Now here's that Morris Minor police car. And the question is, has it got the zip in the roof? Let's see if we can see through the window. Yep, there. I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but. Yes, there is a zip in the headlining. It's genuine. Yeah, yeah it's a genuine ex-Metropolitan <laughs> Police Morris Minor. <laughs> yeah. Let's carry on up here while Harley talks about the Morris Minor. Got the little midget, 1500, 67 Mark II Jaguar. This is a 2.4 litre. This is a this proper Mark II with the big chunky bumpers. This will be replaced a little bit later on by the 240, which was a slightly lower spec version of the car with the narrow slim bumpers, a bit like those on the S-Type Jaguar. But this is a proper Mark II, quite a late one, 1967. Very swish indeed. We've got the Riley Elf, the booted Mini, 1967, and the Derby Bentley, the Derby Era Bentley. What a magnificent bit of kit that is. In 1936, four and a quarter litre. Yeah. Beautiful car that is. It is indeed. It's beauty. Let's have a quick peer in the back. Lovely picnic set in there. Ooh, the modern boys' annual. Oh, I like that. What a fantastic machine! Nineteen 
next to the magnificent Bentley we have this cracking old Morris Mine 1000 1964 registration. What an original looking car that is, that's incredible. I don't think that has seen a sponge in many, many years. Proper survivor car. <laughs> that's incredible. Well, it looks like our first customer modified his summits in the glorious jet black. Oh, that is so original. I hope he can into the uh, arena. Yes, he is. There's a thumbs up there. Fantastic. Nick will do the parking up. What an incredible car that is. I assume it's had a bit of welding out of sight underneath, but the upper body has been left exactly as found by the look of it. Probably have a bit of a chat with me. And then uh, my colleague Peter will move the lunch and make the first decision. <laughs> well, wow. it's all very relaxed. There's no mirrors, there's no crawling under the car, checking the uh, or imperial. Light parking. That's a bit of the fun. And you share your passion. Why you have that engine car that you love so much. You love his time and attention on it. Let's carry on along the road. A couple of TVRs. Got a Griffith here. An MGTF, the 1500. Competition car, the Rover is coming. Fantastic. And, well, this should be part next to that Morris Minor. Look at this, a 1965 Vauxhall Viva HA. I wonder if this was found in the same barn as the Morris. But, wow, look at that. An incredible looking car. I'm assuming that was the last time it saw mainstream use, 1989. Oh, it's got a story in this one. Found in a barn in Ipswich in 2012 and saved from the scrapyard. The only surviving, believed to be the only surviving HA standard base model left in the UK. Well, oh. second owner was an American based RAF Bentwaters who bought the car for a cheap runaround while he was in the UK. Four cars now, this rolling up nicely. They're thinking planning for Sabre. Wow. Yep, definitely a I love the seat covers in the back. <laughs> what a great survivor that is. Such a surprisingly sound. Yeah. Can't be too many unrestored ones of these around. Like I said, it was a, apparently this is the base model, which makes it super duper rare. Let's have a peer in through the window. Excellent. Rises up. Full height, so that will be our fifth car. Plenty of room for more. Fifth cars, customs, modified, competition. Yeah, of course, this formed the basis of the Bedford, the Bedford HA van. As I said, astonishingly faithful and accurate. What a great survivor car that is. I reckon this and the Morris down there will probably get the most attention here today at Cape Storm Hall Classic Car Show. So There's no bumper overriders or any luxuries like that. I wonder if it's even got a passenger sun visor. It might not even have one of those. Nope, no passenger sun visor. Just the driver. Basic as basic gets. It does have a heater though, so it's not completely without luxuries. Four speed gearbox, Britax, safety belts in the front at least. What a great old thing that is. What a treat to see that one here today. <laughs> Polish is overrated. More Renault goodness here. This is a Gordini. Wow. What a cracker that is as well. 1964. It's a little Renault 8. Renault 8 Gordini. Some pretty special looking wheels on this one. This was an evolution of the 4CV in many ways. Again, rear engine. Chevy. 
Chevrolet pickup truck there burbling its way into the arena in the GT6. The Triumph GT6 is heading our way, it's a Mark III GT6. Thanks ever so much, fantastic piece of kit. Yeah, back to the Renault, Gordini, so it's a souped up version. A couple of interesting carburettors on there, a couple of Solexes. The Chevy does its party piece. And second. I wonder if that engine would fit in the 4CV. I'm sure it would. Oh, very rare car. An early Renault Alpine. Or Alpine Renault. Now, so we've got some interesting French cars. Alpine. And there are Renault 8 Gordini, the Renault 4 CV just over there behind those people, and the Talbot Matra Marina. Nice to see them all parked up together, wouldn't it? Got a Datsun now, a Datsun 280ZX, six cylinder car. And Nissan Figaro, and the Maserati Merak on the end here. Have you done many shows with it since then? I've done Hassel Park and Tatton, the classic of all the performance. Pretty swanky looking car, this one, early 1970s. How does it run? How does it ride? Good, actually, yeah. Oh, a cracker. Unless you've got the air suspension up too high. Merak SS, no less. <laughs> Next row, we've got a Riley 1.5, a 1962. Riley 1.5, the twin carburetors, 1500cc B series engine, of course, hiding away under this particular car's bonnet. A lovely, lovely example of an increasingly rare car. Really, really nice. That was a sporty equivalent, if you like, of the Wolsey 1500. I'm not going to pass judgment on that, but the right choice was clearly made. MGB GT, I think we saw this one coming in before. We've got an Escort RS2000. Um, Seriously popular now these are. I think the rally car exploits have really pulled up the values of some of these Fantastic. fast Thanks Fords. So much for it with us. Pretty Such mad prices now machine. for a lot of these quicker Fords like the RS2000, the Mexicos and so on. Totally distinctive different cars. A lovely Mark 1 next to it. Yeah, distinctive and different. I think we'll start with those for this Rover. Just work our way down here away what from the commentary. Mark 1 Mexico, many, many lamps. Four CB Super Oscars on the front of this one. Souped up Mini, looking very purposeful indeed. And on the Rover, the sound particularly put wide wheels on because the arch goes across the... Roll cage. Twin tanks. Good heavens, the sun's coming out. What do we have here? Uh, I for sale. Is that the little Brock House Corgi, is it? Yeah, Brock House, there we are. Hmm. There's that early Calhoun bumpered P1800 Volvo. Saw driving this, saw it come in before. And the Irish registration XHZ, because we don't have Z on our registration numbers here. In Britain, there's a lot to case of it, so but it goes well, as I say. Um, yeah, very, very sharp looking car indeed. An immaculate MGB GT alongside it on an L registration, so similar age to Dad. Just the three cars, twin car retters, different air filter arrangement on this particular car, and it's got a, an oil cooler there. Well done. So you can see the oil cooler pipes there, they usually run off down. Now, let's have the a look. Line. They go down there, yeah, onto the back yeah. of the engine block there. Oh yeah, it's in great condition this one. Now this is quite a serious piece of kit. A smart oh, yeah. fuel filter at the back there, you've got the brake servo as well. That's the heater box, the big wow. black um, unit on the back there. There's a Mark II Jaguar. So, another one for sale, not this car, the Jaguar 240, 1968. Mm. Mm, temptation rears its head everywhere you look. 
I do like these. This is sort of the Curia Cost Blue, the colour that the independent racing team in the 1950s used to colour their C-type and D-type Jaguars in this lovely lightish blue metallic. This has got the Coombe style rear arches, the cutaway rear arches, they are removable. Oh, a really smart car, real great looking machine. And a beautiful Alfa Romeo alongside that. And then the boat tail Alfa Spiders, a 1750. What a great looking little car that is. I'm sure Harley will have spotted this one by now. Lovely shaped lamps, very dainty little bumper overriders there. A stunning interior as well, the wood rim steering wheel. Brilliant, absolute credit to you. Thanks so much for coming in and sharing it with us. Stunning little car. Man at the end of the line. These are absolutely iconic VW based beach buggy. Who wants to talk to me about this? Lancia Fulvia, the front wheel drive, Lancia Fulvia. This is a 1.3 S left hand drive. Back in seats with harnesses. So these are sort of Single almost contemporary rivals back in the day. Of course, the Alpha is rear wheel drive, Lancia is front wheel drive, and you can also get the Zagato bodied Fulvias as well. It's a bit of an odd looking car. I much, much prefer the look of these, the factory Lancia Fulvias. I think these are much better looking cars. My youthful assistant disagrees very much so on that particular point, which is fine. He much prefers the Zagatos, but I much prefer the lines and the shape of this, the stunning factory bodied Lancia Fulvia. Two great classic Italian cars there, next to it. We have the Italian designed Michelotti. GT6, the Mark III Triumph GT6. Modified cars. Nice. And another classic Triumph next to that. A classic Triumph Dolomite, no less, on Dolly Sprint alloys. There's the Sprint alloy wheels. All we would say is send us um, a very detailed list of main modifications done. Um, very handsome cars, these. I do like these. Probably quite an underrated car, quite comfy, good driving position by all accounts, well equipped and go well. Especially the 16 valve sprint, but even the irregular dollies probably a quite a decent steer, I would have thought. And a classic Triumph here, we've got a TR3A. And on the end, an MGC GT in a very unusual shade of beigey grey, I suppose you'd call it. I'm sure that's not the name that... British Leyland gave to these cars in the late 1960s, but you don't see many in this colour, and it's great to see one that isn't red or green. That's a great looking car, that is. I'm not sure we saw this one driving in before, we must have missed this one. A little Morris Traveller, complete with period looking luggage in the back. That's great, that is. We've got an old fishing rod, old tennis rackets in those original sort of frames that you used to be able to put your tennis racket and your wooden tennis rackets into and we have a result three pieces of luggage there held together by an old leather strap yeah. always like period accessories and there's a picnic set in the back as well a ceram picnic set very 1960s looking yeah, always like a few period accessories and period loads in the back of all these cars. This TR3A we see at many, many events. I was chatting to the owner of this one only yesterday. He was out and about in his Austin Healey Frog Eye Sprite. There's a great A60 Cambridge. I'm sure everyone watching this video who is of a certain age, probably my age or more, will remember or have some memory of the BMC Farinas, whether it's the Austin Cambridge or the Morris Oxford, the MG Magnets, the Wolseleys, the Riley and so on. I'm sure everyone's got a story to tell about these. We used to have a A55 Mark II Cambridge in 1959, which was the forerunner of this car with the big fins. We used to have one of those and I ran that for two or three years as my regular driver. So thank you everyone for very smart, shiny maroon, MGB GT here, 
There's that so, Mark II console. MGB we'll with up. front spoiler. There's that Golf Cabriolet getting near the commentary again. And there's the V8 powered MGB. For over three and a half there, shoehorned under the bonnet. It was independent tuner Costello that first shoehorned the Rover V8 engine under the bonnet of these, and BL thought that was a very good idea. By which point in time they'd stopped producing the MGC, the six-cylinder MGC, because they didn't sell very well at all. The big heavy BMC iron block engine was a bit of a lump in the front of the car, whereas the Rover V8 engine was altogether lighter and a much better fit under the bonnet of the MGB. What a great car this is. I bet that goes nicely. Great little Citroen 2CV here. There's that Mark 1 Capri. Super shiny under the bonnet. Good grief. Wish I could keep my engines this clean. There's the Mini with the Rally Chopper on the roof. And there's the Mark II Cortina. This is a V6 powered Cortina Savage. So a real wolf in sheep's clothing like we were talking about with the E500 Mercedes before. This is perhaps its 1960s equivalent. At first glance you assume it's just another four-door Mark II Cortina with bigger wheels and the all-important Savage badge. Point to many, many different things under the bonnet compared to your regular Mark II Cortina. Nice motor litre steering wheel in there as well. Wooden dash, a bit like the 1600E I guess. V6 on the rear quarter there. Cortina 3000E. That looks like a fun bit of kit. I'm sure that sounds nice. Mm, looking a bit dark up there. We'll keep moving. We've got a 67E Type 2 plus 2. It's a Series 1, 2 plus 2, or Series 1 and a half to be precise. So it's a 2 plus 2 fixed head, longer wheelbase, higher roof, and seats in the back. So this is a family man, a family person's E type. A bit more room inside, a bit more practical. And I think it's a 4.2, these were. Yep, 4.2. The earlier cars were 3.8 litres, still this XK engine, but right, this is a 4.2. Got an RS Audi Estate wagon here. Place, a little Mini 95 on Cooper S reverse rims. We'll Next to the Bay Window VW is this. I think this is a Nissan POW. Yes, POW. There we go. A really special import Japanese cars. Quite an interesting little car. Produced by the Pike factory, it says. There's a bit of an information board, which we approve. Retro style three door hatchback by, produced by Pike Factory, a small special projects division of Nissan Company. So just pause the video if you want to have a proper read about this car. But yeah, what a great looking, sort of retro looking Nissan. So we saw the Figaro, but you still see many of these powers. I love the domed mirror-like chrome hubcaps on it. Thank you to our Class 1 cars. Everybody watch this Chevrolet as it lifts itself up. There she goes. What a great car that is. Full-length roof, opening roof. It's a fantastic piece of kit. Look at these, a bit like a 2CV. They hinge up the bottom part of the, the window. Hinges up. What a neat thing that is. A retro dash, lots of painted metal and cream in there retro panasonic radio too automatic gearbox yeah that's a really cool little thing and reflected in those gigantic hubcaps is the little fiat 600 that's parked alongside in fact the broadly similar shapes as well yeah. that's a really interesting little car that is I wonder if Mrs. OCC would drive one of those. I'm sure she would. Mm 
Yeah. A very groovy little machine indeed. You can hear a big V8. Mm, I think the clouds are beginning to dispense with their water. So we'll scoot down here past the little mini. There's that brown, the russet brown, Leyland Princess on a V-plate. The first of the two princesses we've seen arriving today. I wonder if there are any more. Maybe others have arrived. Who knows? There's the green one just over the back over there. That's a great little 2CV. Unless you're watching the old Classic Car channel, and of course everything is true, everything is factually correct, 100% accurate. No mistakes ever make it onto the OCC channel, honest. <clears throat> right, lovely brace of two CVs, red and blue. Just need a white example to join the two of them. Nice early Mini, well I say early, early-ish Mini. Proper Mini, MGA, roof down. Wonder if the tonneau cover will be reached for before the day is through. Same with this TR6 roof down at the moment, but I can feel one or two drips of the damp stuff. The owner of this rubber bumper B has already decided to leave the roof in the raised position, and who can blame them? Lotus Esprit, very low slung Lotus Esprit. Incredible car next to the TVR Chimera, both fiberglass, of course. Very sleek looking car indeed. I'm quick peering through the window. The wind is getting up, it's getting cooler and it's getting darker, which is rarely a good sign. Actually quite a decent turnout of classic cars here today. I wasn't quite sure how many cars would be turning up here at Cape Storm, day two of this two day event. The weather forecast didn't look too bad for today. But it's a fair bit more overcast than I thought it might be. We've got a couple more escorts there. Another TR6, this one in red, next to the mighty Granada gear, 2.8 litre car. The other Leyland Princess, great example in green. I well remember our local BL garage, these were always in there along with Max's and Allegro's. XR3i Cabriolet. Our 129 SL Mercedes, another great little 2CV, the mighty Aston, the BMW 3 Series Cabriolet, the E30, Minis, and that very modified Bedford CF. This feels very similar to Ragley Hall that we attended just a few weeks ago. That was very much a day of sunshine and showers. I don't know where Harley is at the moment, but I think we will go and sit inside the car and maybe just grab a sandwich while we're there. You can see the rain blowing across the field now. I don't know where he is. I'm sure he'll be back here before too long. He won't be far away. If nothing else, I'm sure he's getting a bit peckish. Oh yes, here he comes. But he's going to have to move the giant tin that he bought before. I forgot about my... Yes, uh, you're going to have to tip that outside. Uh, oh, put it on your lap. Put it on your lap. Yeah. I'll hold your camera. If I grab your camera... <laughs> still recording. Still recording, yes, I know. If you put I'm that on your lap... this at the end of the video. You're not revealing it yet, then? No. Are you putting it outside, though? Okay. Yep. Well, it doesn't matter anymore, mm. does it? No, no. no. Yeah, so I figured you won't be too far away. I was just well, I'm a sensible person. I was just saying it's a bit like being at Ragley Hall, wasn't it? We had to come and hide yes. in the car for a bit. because yes, it, it is. It did get a little bit damp down at Ragley. Trouble is, the food Ooh, in what's the back. What's that? What's that? Isn't it? It's a pre... Oh, oh it's that SS, SS, isn't it? There's, there's a lovely pre-war Vauxhall I saw. There's one over there, a maroon one. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, I've not looked at it yet. No, yeah. I need to, I need to yeah, have a look at it once this uh, shower's passed. Yeah, a bit of precipitation. Um, it's not raining too badly now, so... Where were we? Somewhere near that Bedford CF. Got a Jaguar XJR here, very, very nice in black. A V8 powered car, a 4 litre supercharged V8. The Prefect, much modified Prefect, although it says Prefect, but Prefect's a four door. So, where are we? Let's go down here. It's a strange looking machine, a Grinnell. 
They used to do TR7 V8 conversions, I think, Grinnell. Got a Marcos. I'm just going to dash around here, A, because it's raining and I'm getting wet. And B, quite often the cars start disappearing when the rain sets in. And I want to make sure we get at least a bit of a look at all the cars that are here today. Got a lovely scimitar. I do like these scimitar coupes, the SE4 scimitars. V6, I think, in this one. Really set back in the engine bay. There's an SE6 alongside it, also Ford V6 power. MGB roof up, RS2000 roof permanently up. Same with this one here. Tonneau cover on the MGB over here. So if you don't want to go putting the full roof up, if it's just a bit of a passing shower, you could fit one of these tonneau covers. Complete with hump for the steering wheel. The weather forecast didn't say anything about rain today with the little BSA. Let's cut through here. Oops. Breathe in. Lexus, Beamer, Rover, MX5, Porsche, one of the air cooled 911s, an Opel Manta Berlinetta. It's getting wet. Morris Mini, Mini Miner Mark 1. Everyone getting a little bit damp today. Morris Traveller, great, lovely blue. This Mark 2 Escort we have seen before. TVR Chimera. And the water cool 911. A fantastic Beetle. What a cracker that is. An oval window, left hand drive, 6 volt Beetle. That's really nice. And of course, it's distant cousin alongside. We've got a Mark 1 Ford console, a beautiful car. I think we saw this one at Woodford as well, RDA 471. Had a bit of a chat with the owner of this one. Really, really smart looking car. Quite a large 50s saloon. Just a really, really great thing that is. A Morris Miley convertible with improvised roof mechanism. Keeping the damp out. A little spitty, a little 1500. And there's that XJR on the end there. Let's keep going. Rain is horizontal. But never mind. Another 4.2. This is a Series 2 fixed head coupe. It's not a 2 plus 2. This is your standard Series 2 coupe. Very handsome machine. Not 400E alongside that. A little popular. And another 6 volt Beetle. What a great pair of V dubs. This is a right hand drive example, this one. Very similar colour to a Volvo PV that I used to have back in the day. Still with a pop up semaphore indicators, the old traffic aid, and it's got, oh, it's got a telelog on the dash. I haven't seen one of those apart from the one in our car. For years, a little red magnetic telelog. That's really nice. <laughs> wow, great little car. The Porsche, the MGTF, which was the revised version of the MGF, but minus the hydro gas suspension. Merc Beamer, six cylinder X300 Jaguar, the XJ6. So, this is a six pot car. The one piece chrome across the front, the V8 had slightly different bumpers. Another one here. Peugeot, the CC, or is it something? RCZ, yeah, RCZ. Most interesting thing about these is a nice sort of hump in the roof, just like a bit of a, a bubble going on in the roof there. Honda, Merc, the little Metro, Metro City, we saw driving in, they've got an E36. An AC Schnitzer modified E36 3 Series, another Mark 1 MX5, or rather a UNOS, a Focus, a Hyundai, Hyundai, increasingly rare little car, a state version of the Rover 75, a very steamed up yellow MX5 with mystery tin in bag alongside, which I'm not allowed to reveal, MGF. Another Mark 1 MX-5, an RS Escort, one of the later cars, a front-wheel drive and a Granada, 
or maybe the Scorpio version on the end. Ooh, MGB Roadster just coming in, late arrival. Sounds a bit V80. Right, next row, headed up by a Vauxhall Cavalier. Quite a few modern cars down here, so sorry. Quite a few more modern cars, but this is an immaculate triumph for claim. It's so clean. You appear under the wheel arches on this car, and it's just clean underneath as it is on top. Super clean example of a very rare car. Uh, quite a few moderns down here, so we won't dwell too long. Yo. We won't dwell too long. I said yo. Is this a Z3M? Yep. 321 brake horsepower, straight six engine. Quite prone to pulling the, uh, the, mount, the diff mountings out of the boot floor if you get a bit too many furious starts from traffic lights in traffic light Grand Prix. So always check the boot floor if you're buying a Z3M. Aston here. Ooh. Nice retro chairs, yes. Yeah, I'll approve of those. Merc, let's carry on over here. It's like a military, ex military landy. Jeep, another landy. Hmm. Is that blue sky I see? Good heavens. Let's carry on. Minis. Always great to see a few minis here. Fiesta. The MG Maestro. Mark II MX-5, Mini Cooper, a Nissan Micra, it's quite an early one now, 1985. Capri, Capri 2.8i, MX-5s, Shropshire registered, yeah. two-door E30, there's a Fiat, a little Fiat Spider, the Abarth modified Fiat Spider, based on the MX-5. <laughs> More retro cars, modern classics along here. A couple of Rovers there. Here's that VDP 1500. Well polished, you can always see yes who polishes their cars and who doesn't. To be fair, the Rover is not too bad. No. Uh, fresh batteries fitted to camera, so on we go. There's a Nissan Skyline at the end there. I know Harley's a fan of those next to the McLaren. MX-5 and Merc 190 for sale for £3,333. That's a good, well-made little car for someone there. There's a Toyota Serra, Sierra, with the uh, gullwing doors. That's also for sale. Bit of Merc. A few more moderns down here. Modern to me, anyway. Let's have a quick scoot around anyway. Hunting down the older cars, leathering down this incredible TVR. Yeah. Rover 600, disappearing breed. Scooby Doo, Rover, Mazda, uh, Honda Integra Type R. Bonnet up, Aston, bonnet up on the Mark 1. There's that Sierra, the Sapphire Cosworth, Golf GTI Mark 3, Honda Mercs, including the American Spec SL, which I've seen before on the end there. It's always nice to see that out and about. Evo Mitsubishi over there, MGZT, the Bath version, the 595 version of the modern Fiat 500. Now, I know a lot of the oldies were being parked over on the other side of the driveway over there, not far from the auto jumble. So let's go and dash over there, sprint over there. And go and see what's over there because, uh, like I said before, there's always a risk that cars start leaving when the rain sets in. I mean, it has cleared for the time being, so I'm going to make hay while the sun almost shines. Hello, let's 
Let's go and have a look over here. I know Harley's already been over here. They did tell me there are a few interesting cars, so let's go and hunt them down. Emma is being shown round the Renault 4 CV. Sounds like the Renault 4 CV is in the arena. Audi Quattro, that's quite smart, isn't it? That's a smart looking car, nice colour. Four wheel drive Audi Quattro, five cylinder, turbocharged. And next to this C Class Merc, there's that XK. Very nice XK150. The drop head coupe version of the XK150, I think. Very nice indeed. And the H Reg Twin Cam Escort. Sounding very, very good indeed. A lot of the rally cars used to have these matte black bonnets to prevent glare for the, uh, the driver and then the co-driver when they were out in competition. Oh. Oh. Sounds very, very nice that one. Vauxhall Senator gets a leather down. A Cortina 2000E, one of the more upmarket versions of the, the Mark III Cortina. Both of those are rare sights now. Monte Carlo rally, people like uh, the Elevac. Rubber Bumper GT, Roll Silver Spirit, an SLK Mercedes on the end there. And the and we're getting perilously close to the commentary, but I'll try and try and talk over that as best I can. And glistening is this very jolly coloured MGTF. Really swish looking little car, this one. Don't want to be too too portly, clambering in and out of this with the roof up at any rate. It's well, quite tight. Amazing. It looks, it has the look, the feel and the patina of just an original kept up to car. So I compliment you not having over restored it. Well, v Reg late 70s B on chrome bumpers now. TF. Later TF, as we saw before, one of those. There's the MGR V8, this one in green metallic. Lovely powder blue, fairly early MGB rotor. It's a 64 with the pull door handles. Alongside that, the GT. And what is this magnificent station wagon here? Wow, look at that. One of those would be a very welcome addition to the motoring and menagerie back at OCC HQ. That's fantastic. And Mercury. Wow. An incredible looking car. Mm, RS 1600, uh, Mark II, this time a three-door Sierra Cosworth with the whale tail spoiler, 1986-ish. RS, RS 1600i, based on the Mark III Ford Escort, got a Fiesta Super Sport, I think, the Mark I Fiesta. Project Bobcat was the internal code for when these were being designed back in the 1970s. We've got an XR4i with a V6 engine, XR3i, Cabriolet, Mini, r Mini, Vet. Look at this Ford pickup on the end here. Wow. Modern looking engine. There's an engine and a half hiding in there. Survived World War II. Well, that must have been, yes, must have been well hidden. Imagine driving a British car in German occupied France. Love a little spridget here on the end. Round wheel arch midget. Tell us how long you've owned it. We've owned it about two and a half years. When was it brought back from France? Um, Soft top steaming gently as it dries out. Um, 
Fantastic. GMC pickup here. Step side. Here's that mighty Thunderbird that rumbled in earlier. Steering wheel pivots out of the way to allow people of more generous proportions to get in and out with some degree of elegance. Let's carry on up here. We've got a few classic Americans dotted around. Let's go and have a look. Well, it's a great restoration. There's that mighty. It's a great car. Thank you very much. The Lincoln for Continental, it isn't it? Okay. And I love the clap hands. Yeah, bonkers doors, car, that showing is. off its pillar of suspension to the max. Wonderful. What a monster. Now, the Beetleback Standard Vanguard. And there's that Such vet. A handsome car for its era. Very American influence styling. Stunning looking car, I think they are. Fiberglass body, of course. Your Vanguard, sir? How long Dodge, have you had it? Uh, Dodge Charger. No Daisy Duke with this one, sadly. Fuel. But that doesn't see much rest. And then the. the the Challenger, the Dodge Challenger, we've got a Charger and the Challenger, the mighty Challenger. The 440 Magnum badge on the hood, or the bonnet. There's a left hooker Mustang, a black Mustang. There's a stunning example, the water bubbling up on the bonnet, shows a well polished car. Mac 1 Mustang, getting bigger and bigger as the years roll by. The Ford Gran Torino, let's just go around here. Not to get in anyone's way, early 70s, about 71. A four door car. Shades of FV Victor, I think a little bit in the rear quarter this particular machine huge car A decent set of rubber on the back of this Mac 1 good grief but I do I think if I had the choice I would go for one of these earlier notchback Mustangs I think these are great looking cars Classic Corvette corner. These are handsome machines, I think. It's a great looking car. And they've got an earlier, another earlier example alongside it. Not too well up on my Corvette codes. Is this a C1, I think? Chevrolet Corvette, 1959. C1, yeah, made from 53 to 62. I guess this was sort of America's rival maybe to the E-Type, although this predates the E-Type, so maybe the XK150 was more of a rival to this car, but very, very different cars indeed. Another great pickup truck here. Looks like it's on air suspension by how close it is to the ground. And this mighty Buick, I think this is a 58 Buick. Chrome glistening, the little water, drops of water beading up on there. Thank you so much to all. It's a re-chroming bill I wouldn't want to pick up the tab for. Then we've got a Ford LTD wagon here, a station wagon. That's great. Who well, is that? 68. Second in class is our Austin Healy 3000. There's a few cars in the arena here. Let's go and have a quick look. Good to see some proper old cars here getting in the limelight. Headed up by a beautiful pre-war Vauxhall. Not sure if it's a 12 or a 14, one of the two. Let's have a look in the window and see if I can see. Vauxhall Light 6. Yes, it could be a 12 or a 14. Well, that's fantastic, that is. And there's a little 4 CV. Van Vanguard's firing up. 
There's a TR3A just reversing. And there's that green Derby era Bentley as well. The MG Magnet was the winner out of this small gaggle of cars that came into the arena just now. Looks like a very toned magnet, two-tone, larger rear window, based on the ZA and the ZB of course. 1489cc twin carb engine, sporting saloon of the 1950s. Lovely wow. cars they are, definitely on the we short list. Like it, but we'd like it to do it when it happens. We have a call for lost property. If anyone out there has spotted a pink house key, the young lady has come up and said, please don't. There's our beautiful Bentley, the four and a quarter litre Bentley. See the pink house key, or if, as you're wandering around, have a look at the ground. It's what a swish motor car that is. From the era when you would buy your car and have it bodied by your favourite coach builder. With its distraught owner. So a pink house key. If you see that, a yellow lock house key. Wow, isn't that right just a stunning, ground. stunning car? Top to it. And the Austin Healy is going that way. So let's hope we manage that again today. Thanks again. It's a cracking nice. vanguard. But the 60s, we have a Mustang waiting, just anxious, itching to come and join us. Perhaps the defining oh, Beautiful pre-war Vauxhall there. there. Six-cylinder car. Put it in your right-hand pocket. And it's coming down again, joy of joy. There's only where we can be going or just back to the car, I'm not quite sure. And the Riley 1.5 is getting ready, hopefully, to go into the arena. Yeah, it's properly coming down now. Marvellous news. Right, still. This is England and it is summer, so uh, you've got to expect this kind of thing. Anyway, it gives us a chance to have another closer look. There's a slightly wheel spinning Vauxhall. Let's carry on along here. Very nice indeed. Six on the burble. Oh, not too far to the car, I can see Harley's beating me to it this time, so we'll go past this fantastic Sunbeam Talbot Lotus. Yeah, the weather gods are not on our side today. And the ground was already pretty boggy, so this won't be helping it one little bit. coming up as well. <laughs> Greetings. I know. I know. I know. Oh, 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 dear. Oh. That's one all. I'll descend gracefully into the seat. I was just looking at the uh, hmm? pre-60. Yeah, that Vauxhall was nice, uh, didn't it? Yes, it was very nice. He said he rebuilt the engine himself. Did he? Six, yeah, and six the Bentley car, was there. Wasn't? Which is also very nice. Yeah, the, yeah. Mag the magnet one. Yeah, the very tone. Yes, the. I'm not a fan of the colours, probably, but. No, uh, but it's pretty. Seemed pretty pretty typical for those. Yeah. Listen to the rhythm of the falling rain. Oh, it's just dried up again. So we'll venture out and have another look around, see what we missed. Looks like most of the paint on this is quite original. Not 100E. Nice. Mm. <laughs> Including me. Just have a random walk around. See what we may have missed before. Mm, yeah, lots of polish on there. Big Aston. Great little de chevaux. Two more over there. 
we love to see why Let's have a closer look at that Leyland Princess now that it stopped raining momentarily at any rate. So the original Wedgie Princess. I think I've still got the sales brochure for these that I cashed when I was a youth from Reeds of Cheadle. Get some grabs from the other yeah. Princess. Who remembers manual pull-up radio aerials? Of course, if you were really posh, you had an electric aerial that went up when you turned the radio on. You were really living the dream then. So this is the 1800 Princess. Of course, the Princess, they just had a boot lid. They didn't have a hatchback, even though the, the shape of the car certainly lends itself to being a hatchback. That would only come when the Ambassador came along a little bit later, replacing the Princess. Ooh, quite a cool car, very 1970s. 1970s here too, the TR6, the latest example of the Mark 1 and of course the Mark 2 Ford Escort, we've got the E46 Cabriolet, the BMW, well, the last good looking 3 Series I think, and on the end here, a Nissan Bluebird, yeah, Nissan Bluebirds, there's a car you don't see too often now, occasionally you see the turbo versions but not so often the regular, regular road going cars, this is a 5 door hatch. In case you're wondering, that registration actually dates back to 1967, but that's a private plate, a personalised number plate that someone's bought for this car. It would have been on a car in the early 1967 era. wonder what car it was on. Oh. guess we'll never know. Tet 1E. Not a common sight by any means. We'll carry on drifting gently in the general direction of Cape Thorn Hall itself. There's that little black midget, 1500 midget. Mm. Yeah, I was looking at that one before. Yeah. I didn't see the Rover though, there's a P4 Rover 100 here. I love the sound of that GT6, it sounds really sweet. Yeah. The Rover 100, the P4 six cylinder car. Oh, there's our lovely Austin Cambridge heading back from the display arena. They've just been doing 1960s cars, I think. So this one's been in there. It's a nice old radio on the back seat in this one. And the burble there from its 1622cc engine. JC, that is a North Wales area registration. So that's where it spent its early years. And I remember as a kid holidaying in North Wales quite regularly. And you'd see loads of these Cambridges around. Same with Triumph 2000. There always seem to be loads of those around as well. Oh, this just spotted the MGC in this very unusual shade of beige. I'm sure he approves of that one. And the bright red TR3A alongside. First of the TRs to have exterior door handles. This is a 3A, the 3 and the 2 before that. You had to have like a little flap on the side of the tonneau cover and you'd get your hand in and do the handle inside the door. But luxury of luxuries, this had external door handles, locking door handles no less. So that was just a bit of a revision for the 3A. It's had a slightly wider grille as well. There's the Dolly and the Lancia Fulvia, of course. Where's the Alpha gone? Is that in the... Oh, there it is. You can just see Absolutely the boat tail Alpha done, over there in the arena. Volvo's getting a wipe down. They were very prone to rusting, these were even more than the regular P1800s. Is it? Yeah, lovely, that is. Fantastic, <laughs> Two eighty ZX is heading out to the arena as well.
I kind of remember them when I was a kid. I think uh, this is a bit older, but yeah, it's probably just reruns of the uh, Minder and the Professionals. <laughs> I drove one when I was 19 and, and really enjoyed it. Yeah. That's brilliant, getting stuck in and, and learning as you go and not being afraid of making mistakes. There's optimism. What's this here? A modified two door Morris Minor. Morris Minor 1000 of the 1960s. Yeah, 1098. Modern seats. Mini gauges on the back seat. Destined presumably to go in there. It's got the earlier sprung steering wheel. Which looks a lot nicer than the, the steering wheel that later Moggies usually came with. This is a 65 registered car. Yeah. SS100. It could be that one, yeah. We've seen this once or twice before somewhere, haven't we? Is it a real one, wasn't it? I think it probably is a genuine one, isn't it? Hey? Not a bit so sort of juicy. Yeah, the SS100. Thing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there are some, there are some recreations of these around. <laughs> Sometimes when people are building recreations of these as a basis, they use the chassis of the AC2 liter, the post-war AC2 liter. The chassis rails are very similar to those on the SS100. It's still an expensive car, yeah. AC. Another moggy there. Another two-door. This one in old English white, I'm guessing, just slightly creamy. Super little car, little safe, seven, a Caterham presumably, or something of that ilk, yeah. And a Spridget here, another round wheel arch, and look in the window, behold, what do we see here? Merch, car traction, an old classic car. If you've not visited the old classic car merchandise store, please have a look. That's a great way of supporting the channels that we both run, Harley and I. There are loads of things there, there are OCC, old classic car branded things on there, so mugs, stickers, coasters, that kind of thing. But also hundreds of things on there now, specific to particular makes and models of cars. So even if you're not keen on promoting OCC, or the car traction channels, and why wouldn't you, but never mind. Oh yeah, get a photo of that one. But yeah, there are loads of bits of merchandise on there relating to MGs and Morris's, Austin's, Triumphs, loads and loads of different cars, three-wheelers, classic vans, and so on. So if you do have a minute, please check out the link to the Red Bubble merchandise store for the old classic car site and YouTube channel. There's a link in the description to it. And it really, any bits and bobs that you buy on there, we get a small commission and that just helps keep the wheels turning here at old classic car and car traction. Thanks so much to the owner of this great little Spridget for supporting both our channels. That's great to see that. Right, onwards and upwards, and here we have a fantastic Citroen Diane 6. I didn't see this one before, left-hand drive car. We saw quite a few French cars when we went to Alton Park recently for the Autos de France meeting. That was quite good fun. There was a few Dianes there, and the, the Acadian, which is the, the Diane-based commercial, of course. Yeah, that's a very smart car in a lovely, very, very pale green colour. The bonnet's up now on the Cortina Savage. Quite a compact V6 engine, not very long at all, so there's plenty of room for it there. Ooh. Great conversion that is. Ooh. Pretty groovy car. I'm just having a slightly more leisurely walk around here now the rain stopped. The back of the Mark I Morris Mini, the Mini Miner. And here, I just noticed these lovely Speedwell wheels. It's just a beautifully presented little car, this is. Extra lamps on the front. Oldy worldy style tax disc. Really like what they've done there. Yeah, lovely, isn't it? Nice bucket seats as well. Nice early door handles, the, the short ones. Sliding Yep. Yeah. Presumably it's got the pull cords to open the doors from inside, yep. Yeah. Eh? Bucket seats. 
Well, he didn't have door handles. He had those pull cords. You see, and you pull them down. That's a bit weird. Yeah. And it's got the optional. See the optional little things on the switches because they're a bit of a stretch for some people. So you could get those extensions for the flick switches, so you could uh, reach them a little bit easier. You sit far back in these, don't yeah, you? Especially, in, to... especially this one with these bucket seats yeah. in it. But I've noticed that with minis, like the steering wheel is fairly close, but the actual sort of mm. dash is quite far away. The dash is quite a long way away, and it's in the and it's in the centre as well, isn't it? So, but yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful looking little car. This one running in. Who remembers running in stickers? Running in, please pass, they often used to say. Yep. Lovely proper ace plate. Pretty sure it's an ace. Yeah, yeah, it will be an ace plate. And on the Mark 1 Minis, that hinges so that when you open the boot lid to carry your cases, the number plate is still visible. So those are hinges at the top there. Oh. It's a great little car, isn't it? As is the Morris Traveller alongside it. Two beautifully turned out BMC classics. And you've got one of these stick on rear window demisters as well in the back of the Mini. So you wouldn't get one of those as standard. You didn't get much as standard in these little Minis. Because after all, they were very cheap little cars back in the day. Well, that's just a just your regular aftermarket wing mirrors. This one's got a quick release grill on it. You undo these little knurled knobs and you can take the grill off and it makes it a bit easier to get at the distributor yeah that's a lovely moggy next to it <laughs> slightly melted number plate on the series 2 e-type we looked at before porsche 911 reflected in the domed hubcap of its great granddaddy Put a tiger in your tank. All right, we've done the auto jumble, and unsurprisingly, we found something a special spore wheel de surpuissance Renault oils can. Proper tin, complete with the correct lid, as far as I can tell. So that will go and live with the little Renault 4CV or the Renault 750, as I should call it. It's got a bit of patina to it, but it's a similar age to the car itself. So that's quite a bonny French oil can. But not just that, I've just annoyed Harley a great deal. Because I found this, an early Castrol script, Castrol R, racing oil can. It's quite a rare thing that is, and that will go in the back of the oldie Dodge Transporter. Because that's a sort of... <laughs> no, I haven't got one of these, that's Not the first... One. That's the first one of these Cast Castrol R cans that I bought. That's quite nice, probably 1940s, 1950s, exactly the right era to go in the back of the Dodge. So that's a real result. Harley is quite annoyed, A, that I found this, and B, that I had to borrow the money off him to buy it. So, uh, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have <laughs> said, no, I'm not lending you. That's double annoying, isn't it? No, I've got a 10% tax. Have you? Uh, yes, so you owe me the, the, interest, <laughs> the interest rate is creeping up ever so high. But, yeah, anyway, that's a couple of good results there from the Auto Jumble area. It's nothing compared to my part. Indeed, no. Harley bought a lovely tin before. Yeah, I'll, I'll but get it out now when we get back. That's not been revealed yet. He's going to do the reveal himself over on his car traction channel so I probably won't be allowed to preview that one because he'll get quite cross about that no, I'm sure I'll, I'll, reveal, I'll reveal it on your channel well you don't mind well, alright let's go back to the car and have a look at this tin that Harley bought a couple of hours ago yeah where was this sun when we were walking around before lunch good grief a few people have left already which is a shame but I look at the weather now off what? Canberra, where we mm. started the auto jumble. You said you weren't going to buy any tins. Yeah, well. That's, that's a quote. I know, I said I wasn't going to buy anything, but, you know. Promises are meant to be broken. Right, mm. let's get this stashed away. Right, so Harley's going to do a reveal for us, especially here on the old classic car channel. I'm going to have on my lap. So yeah, well, you did. Yes, he's going to have to take this on his lap back yeah. home. Look at that. Silkaline lubricants can, complete with Concord on the cover on the, not on the cover on the front of it but yeah what a yeah, great thing that is no it's not double sided but what a great thing that is look at that beautiful yeah and it's got the correct cap on it as well bit of pattern into that paintwork but yeah what a great find that is so between us we've had some good finds today here <laughs> 
That's really, really groovy tin. Top all in removed from the Morris Tour. Well, I've got a feeling it won't be long before it's back on again. What a bonny little car this is. Escorts are disappearing. At a very advantageous price. So once Mick has done his uh, trapping wall duty and cleared the arena, we'll be looking for cars from 2000 up to 2008. As I said, subtle and understated on Mitsubishi, isn't it? And a motorcycle king. We will be here until the end of play today, at which point we'll hand them all over to. Oh, sure. But they wasn't able to pull them back then. Um, <laughs> but we are after a few cars. Uh, they're back in the shape of the land to the front. Looking like a Friday. <laughs> but they're the ones that were all in for me. The sunbar with the plate. Uh, a bit unique. It is an old four. Maybe it's going to be there. So it seems to drive. And so, thank you all very much for bringing these five cars up. As we know, the Mercedes are going to stay with us, but hopefully they are listening. And uh, Victoria has gone up to ask them politely if they would all like to join us. Any Mercedes Benz from anywhere on the showground. Uh, the modern one, an ancient one, a little 4CV is heading home with BX, they come together. And the front wheel is off the ground, you see it? Oh, they're making their way in convoy, processing towards us. There's a lovely, lovely older Mercedes. A few of the Mercedes are coming into the arena now. I don't know how many of them will actually pop down. There are one or two lovely Mercs in front of the old hall here at Capesthorne. But how many will come into the arena? I'm not quite sure. Find out which one There's that lovely 5 litre E500. That's a nice car, that is. The E500. That's a moon. And there's that beautiful drop head one that we saw before. Comes in. Not all of them two seat sports cars, saloons, four seat convertibles. The R129 SL. What a great selection. This is good. R107 is a pair of them. Section before car of the show, and Peter's going to have his work very much cut out for him. That's what we like to see. There's our lovely 420 SEC. Not fixing this. I'm so disordered by the wood. Parking everybody up. And the 124 series saloon burbling quietly in straight six engine. Coming in now is our treasure members. What a great turnout. We always do well here at Cape Town Hall. Have a good time. It's a social event, as I'm sure you've all gathered, and we'll talk to anybody that will listen about cars. So I'll hand you back to your MC now, and he can tell you what the real thing's all about. Thank you ever so much, Alan. That's great to hear. The opportunity to keep it out for car of the show. Congratulations. Well done. What a great little mini. How clean is that? Got the chopper on the roof and the space hopper. Who remembers space hoppers? 
I remember space hoppers. <laughs> I remember bouncing up and down the road on one of those. And also riding a rally chopper as well. That's the first thing I pieced back together. It was a rally chopper that a friend of mine was chucking away. It was all in pieces. So I picked up all the pieces outside his front door where it had been left for the, the rag and bone man. And I pieced it back together, gave it a very bespoke paint job. Only got loads of use out of it. Great for pulling wheelies on they were. Yeah, what a super clean little min. It's absolutely immaculate. Long termers on the channel may well remember we visited the Hovercraft Museum. That's well worth visiting. Check out the video on that one and indeed our ride over to ride on the Isle of Wight on a hovercraft. That was fantastic fun. Check that video out as well. Not many people viewed that one, but I was actually really pleased with how that video came out. So check that one out, please, when you're done here. Yeah, what a great little mini display. Well, as we walk past this groovy little Nissan Pal, which is certainly one of the more interesting cars we've actually seen here today, even though it's a fair bit newer than the cars we tend to look at when we pop along to classic car shows. It's just such an unusual machine. We like unusual machines here at OCC. Yeah, what a great little thing that is. Anyway, I think we will probably start wrapping up this video. There are many gaps on the field now. The very tone MG Magnet is also heading off. Very swish, very elegant cars. I do like those a lot. There's that Triumph Acclaim, the TR6. Quite a few cars heading off now. So I think we'll probably do the same. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please check out the rest of the old classic car channel while you're here. And there'll be many, many more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now. Beautiful Mark II. What a lovely looking car they are. Absolutely. Well, the non factory roof cover is back in place. Putting on such a great show and sending his punching car to Joe.